How's it going everybody? Welcome to the Hammer New Crash Course. I am Josh KI6NAZ. Today I'm going to replay for you a talk I did for a local ham club over Zoom, which makes it easy for me to record. And it was on the topic of my favorite go bags for amateur radio. And so I went through three of them. And uh, yeah, there's going to be one in there that you definitely probably remember if you've been watching my channel long enough. So let's get started. Thanks for watching. privilege to introduce Josh Nash, KI6NAZ. You've probably seen him on YouTube. You've seen him at HRO, perhaps. Um, he is an aerospace software engineer. He started in 2004. Um, his wife got tired of him talking about ham radio, and she says, hey, you know, why don't you go do on YouTube and do what you love? And that's what he did, and he started in 2006, and then in 2018, he started the ham radio crash course, and he's fantastic. So I'm going to let him take it away, Josh. He can talk as long as he wants. If you have any questions, just put your hand up in the, the hand session and ask him. Um, he, he really um, enjoys talking about ham radio. He's kind of obsessed with it, but... <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Margaret. I appreciate that. Well, hello, oh, everybody. I, what's that? Hello. Hey, thank you. I, I'm talking to uh, local folks, all, all people down here in Southern California. I'm in Cerritos. Uh, in fact, I was I was pulling up an image I could show you. This was uh, where I was at a couple of weekends ago. Does anybody know uh, where that is? If they hmm. if they look at that close enough, it's the wetlands. It is the wetlands. Yeah, and and those little uh, circles of of smoke was the Friday. Um, before the air show where they were doing their practices. So I was doing a, a POTA activation. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, no, I'm I'm because I'm on my computer, so I'm showing you yeah. just if everybody circles or, or highlights me, you should be able to see all these. But, yeah, I got out and did a little Parks on the Air activation with uh, one of the antennas that we'll be talking about here, which is the uh, the Buddy Stick Pro. But, yeah, Margaret and I talked a little bit beforehand, and, and we were thinking I would talk about... Uh, so my radio kits, and I'm going to talk about three of them, but uh, basically the idea with a lot of my radio kits is to, to be portable, to have uh, additional features, maybe uh, beyond what you might use for just single Recording sideband. Recording in progress. Or if you're doing uh, VHF, UHF to add extra capability in like APRS, which is really handy, particularly when you're out in the field, and uh, packet radio, just traditional packet, which I always still like to do too as well. Uh, what else? Yeah, and then HF obviously is kind of like my my main passion, what I have the most fun doing. So I definitely dip into that a little bit here, and then we'll have a little fun kit at the end that I'll show everybody. So, okay, this is our first bag, uh, the one that's facing us with the ham radio outlet pin and the QST pin and the ARRL logo pin. This is just a uh, camera bag, basically, that I repurposed for having fun with ham radio. So let's dive into that one first. I'll slide over here for a second. This is a Peak Design Sling. I believe it's a one liter, maybe two liter sling bag. And it zips open and I like to, this might be fun for, for you all since you're kind of local and I know you do a net. Um, so I'll, I'll fold this open here. So in this bag, I can do VHF, UHF, packet radio, and APRS, and I can connect actually to uh, local WinLink nodes as well. And if I'm throwing out terms that you guys are not familiar with, feel free to, to raise your hand. I'll pay attention and I'll answer as we go. But APRS is basically a positioning and um, messaging system that we can use to actually send text messages to people through their traditional phone system, so through over SMS. I use it sometimes when I'm outside of cell phone coverage. I'll use it to message my wife to let her know I'm okay. But there's that antenna we mentioned, the signal stuff, signal stick antenna. This one glows in the dark. Uh, next to it, though, is kind of the main radio of the whole kit. This is a Kenwood THF6 which is still just a fantastic radio. Kenwood really does make some great HTs, at least they used to, but they're, um, they're kind of discontinued on a lot of their radios. On the back of it, that's also kind of a special item. This is called a MobiLink TNC3. 
Now, what this does is allow me to Bluetooth to it at you know whenever I want with my phone or a tablet, and to convey the information that it, the radio is receiving, and it'll also transmit. So, with that guy, I just kind of turn him on. I'll set this up, and then we'll put it aside for a little bit. Uh, to make it kind of work as easy as possible when I'm out in the field, I run a uh, tablet. Oh, this is a Lenovo tablet that's available off of Amazon, or I got this one off of uh, Walmart, actually. I picked this up at the Cerritos Walmart. This does Bluetooth, so it allows me to connect to the radio, um, and that's how I'm able to make connection there. So I'll let that turn on for a second as I keep going. Next to it, to make my life a little bit easier um, for typing, if I'm doing emails or whatnot, I have a little Bluetooth wow. keyboard there. So it's uh, portable, and I can be on the go at any time and whip that out. And uh, I can do email from a picnic table or um, from the, the trails if I'm out there like at the wetlands or I'm up in one of our local hills or summits. How expensive is that, Josh, that keyboard? The keyboard's like, uh, I think, $30 or so. So that's, that's a good point. I'll cover the cost of some of these items. Um, that's probably going to be helpful. So the Kenwood THF6 uh, is no longer in production. This is a used radio that I also picked up at a ham swap, uh, swap meet, and I think I paid about $120 for it with an extended battery. And it's it's quite a good uh, radio. It really is. It's it's still one of my favorite HTs. It's it's VHF, UHF, and um, and 220. But it also does wideband receive. So you can use this for AM, FM radio, and you can use it for shortwave as well. So you just attach a long wire antenna, and you'll be able to listen. The Mobi Link is one hundred and twenty dollars, and that little device it's just Velcroed onto the back here. This device allows for that. Um, that Bluetooth connectivity to the tablet. The tablet runs about $100. And you don't have to buy this tablet. You can use any Android tablet, and you'll be able to do the same kind of functionality. So that's, uh, I like that. I kind of keep that with me. It's kind of like my, uh, my everyday carry bag, if you will, because it's pretty light. And along with that, I carry a battery backup or a battery bank for keeping things charged. This is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery that takes, that has an 20, out. 20,000 milliamp hour. Not amp hour, milliamp hour. 2,000. Nope, 20,000. <laughs> Can I zoom in enough that you'll see it? Hold on. Remember, not amp hour, milliamp hour. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yep, twenty thousand. This is that's one of the reasons I, I keep it is it's it's a it's a heavy little box there, but it's pretty nice. And I also keep a little camera. I, I, I put this in here because Margaret or Midge saw this when I was at the uh, the HRO. This is the camera that I use when I'm in the field. We all like good pictures and whatnot when we go do radio, and so that's what this one is. It's a gimbal, so it can do steady shots. <laughs> it's a bit outside ham radio, but I thought I would just share it because it's something that I keep in the See how small that is? Yeah. Look how small that is. It's just a fun thing. If you guys uh, have your Facebook pages or whatnot, I like to keep a lot of that stuff up there um, for videos and images that I take outside of YouTube because right? a lot of my stuff is on YouTube. All right. Let me swap over here. Get some of the stuff out of the way. Josh, um, yep. you, you mentioned the um, the Android tablet. Can you use an iOS product like an iPad? Uh, good question. You can, uh, but your apps are going to be limited. The reason why I go with the Android tablet is that there are more applications that are ham radio friendly. Um, I do have this started up, so I'll show you what those apps are really fast. You can do quite a lot, surprisingly, with some of the apps on Android now. Now, it, it, it definitely doesn't replace a PC, um, but it's it's definitely getting there. And I did a, a live stream a couple of weeks ago on that, and it was, um, it was pretty handy what you can do now. So let me wait for this to boot up. 
and I'll go ahead and show you more. Okay. Hey, Josh, who makes the uh, camera? DJI. I keep it pretty simple. I don't include um, much on this except for ham radio applications. So let's see if I can... You get that? There we go. Uh, so the primary apps I use are APRS Droid. I use something called Woad, W-O-A-D, and that is a packet radio client for Windlink. So I can do packet radio Windlink on this uh, tablet, so I can download all my emails directly to this using the RF on my HT. So it's a full RF connection. It's not using the internet or anything like that. Oh, we got a, I got a notification. Hold on, sorry about that. Uh, there are a couple other apps like uh, SDR Touch. So if you are software-defined radio users, like if you have a dongle for software-defined radio, you can use that application to actually use this as the the processor for that SDR for doing the uh, digital conversion. And repeater book, of course, Echo Link. And this is a pretty interesting one, this PRX-TX. This allows you to remote control some HF radios, uh, including, I believe, the G90, and, or the Shegu G90, and some of the, um, what am I, the Flex radio systems one as well. The fun thing about this is because of the Android being a little bit more open, you also get access to applications for running your nano vna if you have one of those which is a, a very inexpensive antenna analyzer that runs about 50 dollars. that's very handy when you're in the field because it's very hard for me to see the small screen in the nano vna so being able to have it connected directly to my uh my tablet here makes it a lot easier and then i have the uh, little uh i have a volt ohm meter or a multimeter that connects via bluetooth as well so that's my, my little utility kit, um, my daily utility kit. But, oh, and there's APRS squeaking. Hold on. Let's stop that. Does anybody use APRS? Do you guys use APRS very often? Mm -hmm. Tim does, Tim. New. Yeah, I, I love APRS. I think it's great. Yeah, we had, we had APRS in a backpack on some horses when we did a when we worked a 50 mile endurance ride in Santa Cruz. Hey, that's nice. That's cool. All right, so this is my, there we go. This is my Patagonia uh, 20 liter. It is an Anna Kappa backpack that I always have this rubber gear snake on the side of. This is sold on a roll at Walmart. It's just wire with a real heavy rubber insulator on the outside. I've used this so many times to strap a mast um, up against a park table or a pole or even a stump of a tree. I've, I've used it to attach to all kinds of stuff. So that always goes on the side. In the, I'll open this guy up here. Uh, in the outside pocket, I do like to keep an assortment of cables. So this is the power cable for the ICOM IC705. Uh, this is a USB-C cable, which is for a phone. And this is another power cable that goes to my solar panel and battery system that I use. They all have uh, power pole terminators, Anderson power pole terminators. I happen to like those a lot. And they are double-ended, so they can connect together, and then that goes into the solar panel. That's how I like to use that. And a hair tie. I always keep like a, I, I steal one of my wife's hair ties and I throw that in my bag. Those always have a lot of use for tidying things up when you're out in the field. Okay. So in the main pouch here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the side. The side here is where I've got my solar panel system. I will move this out of the way for a second so I can show you. This is called a Powerfilm Solar Lightsaver Max. It is a smaller lithium ion battery. I think it's maybe four amp hours. So not very big, 
but it has an integrated uh, solar panel. And let me show you how that looks here. The, uh, the added value of having kind of a built-in panel and a battery is, is pretty awesome, but they are definitely not giving these away. This is a very expensive uh, piece of kit. They run for about $350 for the solar panel and the battery setup, which is nice to have on hand because it's, it's now one less thing you have to pack when you go in the field, but man, they, they definitely are not giving them away. Let me uh, roll this up really quick and I'll show you the one of the features about this that I really like. Um, I, I often will have, like I said, a tablet or a phone, or even a laptop in some cases with me when I go in the field. I have a FedEx file somewhere. The problem is that oftentimes um, we don't have the right power to keep them charged. So this device will um, actually put out, it has two USB connectors, two USB connectors that are not focusing, but you can take my word for it. Two USB connectors and also a 12 volt output so that means I can run a ham radio on the 12 volt pin there and devices off of the USB, which again, make it really, really handy. It's not gonna work so well if you're running a, a more powerful radio like a Yaesu FT891 um, or a, uh, maybe even a Shegu G90, depending on your level of transmitting. It might be too much for it, but. Um, What's the weight of that? Is oh, good question. Light? It's. I, I was not prepared to answer that question, but it feels like it's about two pounds, maybe at most. It's not very heavy. It's it's That's rather crazy. on the light side. Uh, the the Yaesu FT three FT five DR just came out. It's it's a new HT. I feel like if you own the FT three or the FT two, you don't necessarily need to upgrade unless you happen to uh, be in areas that are wet or you have a chance of taking a dip in a stream or something like that. This radio is um, submersible up to about a meter, and I have mm. tested that. It works. <laughs> I left it in a, a, a tub of water for about 30 minutes or so, and it came out just fine. Is that a good starter uh, radio for a new ham? I would not recommend that as a starter radio for a new ham. It is also pretty expensive. So that makes it a little bit uh, out of reach, I think, for most for most new hams. But it's a great it's a great radio, regardless. Um, uh, Josh, what's the story in that green antenna you mentioned before? Oh, this guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is the uh, signal stuff signal stick. As uh, Midge had already mentioned, uh, I'm a big supporter of this company. They uh, fund hamstudy.org, the website, through some of the sales and proceeds of this antenna. It's the same owner owns both hamstudy.org and, and signal stuff signal stick this one is the glow in the dark model and it just winds up like that no oh, okay this one's bnc uh i like the bnc connectors i use an adapter uh for the hts that that don't have bncs most don't these days but it's really nice that i can swap it in and out with how much of a problem a6 gdb maybe six v and as far as antenna oh, goes, uh, that antenna I showed you in the beginning yes, is even. the Buddy Stick or the Buddy Pole Buddy Stick Pro. And it packs up in a little bag like this. That is a tripod antenna. It stands over eight feet tall or so. And it is a loaded coil based system. Now I'm on the FT, uh, the, the FT3D. Loaded coil is yeah, going this, to add Q. This one programmed in, but I need to program a lot hey, more. Hey, hey David. Hey, David, will you mute your microphone? David, mute yourself. Or I can mute him. It's okay. I got him. Go ahead, John. All right. No problem. So this is a uh, high Q antenna because it is using a coil of water of wire. The advantage with the buddy stick, all the buddy. Uh, buddy stick, buddy pole, their system. Um, the buddy sticks are generally center loaded, and that seems to be more effective. I, I don't have a, a long-term study with this antenna yet, but I was uh, running on 10 watts from Seal Beach, and my second contact was Alaska that contacted me for doing Parks on the Air 
which was great. And that was on single sideband. I'm not, I'm not confident enough to do a full activation with Morse code yet. I'd like to get there hopefully soon. Um, but single sideband, still not bad. Um, just keep in mind that it being a high Q antenna, if you like to jump frequencies around a lot, you're going to have to retune the antenna. And that's a physical action. You go in and actually adjust the wire um, on the radial end, lengthen it or shorten it to get the match you're looking for. And feel free, just yell out if you got questions. What's that, what's that run, Chuck? Good question. Anybody that know? Yeah, it, um, well, you know what? It's packaged pretty well. That's what's neat about it. It is, yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. it's kind of all inclusive. Oh, hey, there you go. 199. No, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not, not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. And oh. um, the, there are some comments. I'll tell you what some of the comments are that people have said. It uses this little mount system, it's called a Versa T mount system. Uh, the tripod is wobbly, but you kind of have to get up under it and kind of open the legs up a little bit and center it. And I haven't had a problem. There's an eye bolt mount in the bottom that you can hang your backpack from if, you, if you're if you worried about wind um, pushing it over. But I got a lot of uh, natural wind and wind from the Thunderbirds as they were flying overhead during that air show. And I didn't have any problem with it toppling over. So it's, it's a pretty nice antenna. It is a uh, elevated radial antenna. If you see the little stick there that's off in the distance in this picture, you can barely see it, but right there is the radial wire. The radial does need to be elevated above the ground, and that helps reduce uh, ground losses, at least, again, from, from my bit of experience with it. So not bad. Not, not a bad antenna at all. All right, let me go back over here. And then last but not least, I run... Um, the ICOMS IC705 now primarily in the field. I, um, boy, I've really taken a liking to this radio and it's not because it's, you know, necessarily the best receiver. Um, it's obviously QRP, but all the other radios that I would want to take in the field, this just does so much more than, than those. With the built-in GPS, uh, built-in Wi-Fi, and uh, the built-in Wi-Fi actual, what's the word I'm looking for? Built-in Wi-Fi access point. So you can be in the field and you connect to this with your laptop via Wi-Fi and you can control it 100% remotely, which is pretty fantastic. But I sometimes pair it with a smaller laptop or a uh, Toughbook, Panasonic Toughbook, and that seems to get the job done. But for most of the times I go out, I just simply do single sideband for Parks on the Air. So that's uh, my primary use case with that. I got a couple more minutes. I'll try and I'll try and do one more thing because this is always my my fun kit that I like to show people. So let me get this out of the way so I don't smash my 705 when I get this kit up on the table. So here. Here's my kit that I just kind of leave at home. <laughs> it's seven o'clock. And I'll show you this at a different angle because it's a little too big to put on the, uh, where is it? Right there. There we go. Uh, here's my other uh, kind of kit. It is a small, uh, let's see. It is a six gallon uh, galvanized trash can. I picked this up at Lowe's or something like that. And I put a little pop rivet with a little stabilizer, and that's a, what is that, a, the mount there for like a ham stick, or what is that, a quarter 20 mount? I can't remember the, the name for that mount. With a, a mobile bracket for, uh, for like a trucker mobile mirror thing. So you could throw an antenna on top of that if you wanted to. But let me, let me show you what's inside this one. This one's a little bit fun. I got a question. Somebody was like, what, what could you put in like a Homer bucket to be a little bit more prepared? And I thought to myself, well, why stop at Homer bucket? Let's, uh, let's grab a whole trash can. Uh, cause I think the challenge was like, you know, EMP related communications. And I was like, okay, we can have some fun with that. Now, uh, it will this, <laughs> I'm not going to get too deep into the science of an EMP, but this does provide about 66 to 72 dBs of attenuation when you are considering the frequency of operation. And I did test that uh, with a uh, spec uh, yeah, spectrum analyzer to, to do kind of a, a check of the whole thing. But, you know, it's a bit of fun. So <laughs> we're, we're just having fun. In that, I throw a uh, 9 amp hour battery, which I'll put right here. This is a bio NO battery. 
I have a... About midway through here, I'd like to remind you, if you're having fun, click the thumbs up. And I also want to make a note, um, redundancy, redundancy in kits. We talked about this on the last Ham Radio Crash Course podcast that I do with my wife. I'll post the link in the description so you can check it out. Redundancy in kits, we talk a lot about kits and building kits, and we take a radio, like this is my... This is one of my favorite HTs, it's Kenwood THF6. And I take it out of this kit, and I put it in this kit. And then I take it out of that kit, and I put it in this kit. And it depends on what I'm doing at any one time. Why I'm gonna take this radio out of that kit and put it in this kit. Maybe I want a lightweight kit, or a little backpack, or a, or a fanny pack kit. Um, I am now of the mind where we need to have redundancy in our kit. So maybe have a couple of HTs that you really like. Maybe even have a HF radio like a Shegu G90 like in my EMP kit that just that's its job it's just that kits radio and it's always going to be in that kit and that's just kind of what I depend on start thinking about redundancy maybe it just means you have a couple more Baofangs or some other radios that you may splash in anyway let's keep going with the talk thanks for watching solar panel this is also BioNO it's a 25 watt panel so you're probably not going to get away with um, running the G90 too hard and next to it, in this little pouch, this is a pretty killer um, unit. Another buddy pole unit. This is the first gen Power Mini. They now have a second gen. The only reason to go with the second gen Power Mini is if you wanted the uh, increased amps uh, out of the USB. This tops out at 2.5 amps, which is probably not enough to charge most laptops. Um, you can probably get a couple of tablets, or you can charge a tablet or a phone with it, but just keep that in mind. The new one, I think, goes up to four and a half, is my understanding, but I could be wrong. Uh, odds and ends, but I'll, I'll pull the radio out first, because probably people are the most interested in that. The radio that, that just kind of lives in that bag is my Shegu G90. And it is a, you can see my hand there, it's not too big. Let me put this down there. It's a 20 watt uh, transceiver. It's HF only. Um, it may do, no, it does, we'd have to check. I'm not sure that it does six meters. HF only, and it's on a little sled that has a fan in the bottom with little kick out legs like this so that you can operate from a, a nicer position. So if I turn on my other camera. You can see it right there. He's just kind of sitting with the legs up. So this guy's inexpensive. Uh, if, if you were someone that was looking for getting into HF and you weren't completely sure that you wanted to take the plunge at almost $1,000, this is probably as far down um, on the cheap side I, was, I would go. The Shegu G90 runs about $450, and there are a couple of different options for it. If you are going to go down that road, though, and you have any interest in doing um, digital modes like JS8, Call, or FT8, you will probably need to pick up um, what they call a CE19 audio interface, and that's what allows you to do um, the transmitting of audio between the radio and your computer. And let me go back over here. That's like a signal link? It's kind of like a signal link, yeah. It, it's not as it, so if you if you have a signal link, you'd probably be better off with a signal link. The signal link does a little bit more for you, like volume control. Mm -hmm. But it's um, this is like I think it's forty bucks. Signal links are generally pretty expensive; they're over a hundred dollars. Inside, I've got just the cabling for doing the connection to the radio to the computer, and a couple of audio cables for doing digital. The problem when um, with a radio like this and kind of the advantage of having an ICOM uh, 705 or some of the other HF radios is it's, it's a one cable system versus this requires two audio connectors for receive and transmit and then the cat control cable for the computer assisted um, radio control. Yeah, I'll show you, people ask me, what is, what is the inside of this trash can? So I wanna make sure I show that. I'm not saying anybody go out and make yourself an EMP bunker trash can or anything like that, but sometimes it's a little fun. Uh, I did contact cement, and I'll show you. Spray on contact cement uh, on the inside, and I coated that with cardboard. And then flipped around reflective um, packing material 
little bubble packing material, spread that out and sprayed that on as well. And that's how I have this uh, laid out, this little bucket. There's a microphone it, in the bottom. Go ahead. Josh, do you, do you have your bucket uh, grounded? No, you know what? I tested that as well. Um, I found that regardless of whether I had the bucket grounded or not grounded, the attenuation that the bucket was providing, even at, at peak trans, uh, transmit of the radio I was using for test, didn't it didn't change. So there there is an argument that I've heard that it does need to be grounded to be effective, but I'm not solely convinced that that's true at this point. Because if we consider the skin effect um, of the of the radio waves, then they're just riding on the outside anyway, and then largely dissipating into the atmosphere or something else that it couples to. Those are my thoughts. I could be wrong. And then I leave two silica gel pouches in the bottom just to keep things dry. So there you go. Do you, um, on the lid, there's two little holes where the uh, handle on the lid attaches to the lid. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, solder that or do anything to close that little open? It's a real tiny little hole. Yep, so yep, great question. And I did, I soldered the, those holes. <laughs> just, you did solder them? Uh, yeah, you just kind of get out your blowtorch, braise it a little bit and sweat some uh, solder onto it. Uh, you could use like uh, aluminum tape or something like that, that that makes a connection. That'd be another way of going just to cover that up if you wanted to do that. I'm also not necessarily convinced that that little hole is going to be an ingress for, you know, destructive uh, radio waves. But again, I could be wrong. I'm so glad you showed that EMP because uh, a couple of us, Greg and I and mm -hmm. Don, have been talking about having a, um, a garbage can and we have purchased the garbage can and we're looking at how to um, line the inside, you know. Yes. And what I purchased was a bag from, I think it was uh, Sam's Club that was uh, like thermal. And it has this plastic zipper on it. And so I just put that inside there and was just going to zip it. I don't know if that's good enough, but that was... I, I, okay. would, I would go, if you can, I would go an extra level of... Um, so you need insulation between the whatever it is that may become a electrically charged, right? So that's why I went with the, the outer steel there. Inside has a layer of cardboard. The cardboard is... 100% wraps around um, the, the units that, that's going in the bag. And then I have the packing material, which adds another kind of layer. And really, the packing material is just to soak up any shock that, uh, that occurs if I bump it into something or whatnot. It is metallic on the outside, but I'm not convinced that that does a lot either. Most of the things are in a bag. The radio should probably also go in another insulating bag. Um, I joke, hey, a big Crown Royal bag works out pretty well to just put your radio in and throw it in there. <laughs> I, I would, uh, I would put, though, the I would separate some of your equipment with uh, with insulating material or possibly one of another like uh, electrostatic resistant bags that you can buy for electronics or whatever. Just make sure it's big enough to fit everything in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Did, any questions, comments, thoughts? The, are you transmitting with your radio inside that uh, tub? No, no. Yeah. So that's. I mean, obviously, we don't. We don't know a type of situation where a a, a trash can like that would be potentially useful. I would uh, probably hold off on opening that up and try using other electronics first before we had to go to the, oh boy, this is a really bad situation and have to go to the trash can kind of thing. I will mention too, I think you, Midge, you mentioned you got yourself a trash can. Did you go with like the smaller trash can or the big full size trash can? I got the full, I think it was 10 gallon. The, the problem I had, well, 10 gallons isn't that bad. Ten gallons oh, is not, not that bad. bad. No, no, that's not that bad. It's the it's the really big trash cans. I'm always I'm always curious what people are going to put in there and think they're going to then carry that away somewhere if they're ever going to have to grab it and go um, deal with the realities of who knows what. I, I would rather have like a nice small one or maybe two small ones for electronics that could fit in the back of a truck real easy, and then you can just just grab it and get out of there if you if you needed to. But if you know 
is if you're just going to have the big trash can, that's going to have more space available for you. Yeah, most vehicles now won't even, you couldn't even put a 10 gallon trash can in. Now, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Food for thought. I I've, I seem to have amassed a lot of stuff <laughs> over the years. Oh, I think it was great, and uh, I, because you know what, you've given us your ideas and things that you've learned how to process your equipment, so it's so efficient. And I think, like for myself, I carry a big Apache box and a, and another Apache box for my computer, and then my solar panel. I you know it's, I I really enjoyed seeing how you. Um, compact everything and and had it so easy. I, I definitely have tried to like reduce the kit down um, depending on what you're talking about. My Poda kit, I really like the the solar panel combination with the 705 because it will. You have options then. You can run the 705 at its uh, five watt output. If you attach it to a 12 volt source, then it will bump that up to 10 watts output, which. You know, 10 watts is, at the end of the day, it's it's half an S unit. I appreciate, uh, you know, sound uh, over SSB or more power. But that sometimes, you know, could mean an extra contact or whatnot, particularly when you're doing parks on the air. Parks on the air, a lot of time, people are looking for you. They're trying to make a contact with you. And they may just be, like, right there, and they can't do it. And sometimes just <laughs> an extra five watts will, will help you out yeah. a little bit. So the Android tablet, is there a minimum... Android tablet configuration that's useful? Uh, good so, question. Because I've, I've, I've got a MobiLink with an iPad, uh, and so I've got that going. But yeah. the, as, you're, as you mentioned, the, the, there's not the apps. The, it, there's, it's a real it's, – it's a struggle to get more than one useful app to use. I so, – I'm a big iPhone guy and iPad guy. I, I do like that stuff. But um, when it comes to the ham radio and you want to get the most bang for your buck out of your, your ham radios that can do mm -hmm. it, particularly if you have the Mobi linked, then you're probably going to want an inexpensive Android. And like I said, I, I just went with the $100 one that's at Walmart, the Lenovo. It's the M8 tab. And then they have another one that's a $100. Really, that's all you need. The only thing... You know what? Let me let me see if it's behind me. I've got another baggie that I use for the tablet. Hold on. So the only thing I'll mention, you don't need this for the Mobi Link, but uh, is this in here? Let me see if it's all in here. That's not the right one. Well, I'll show you in the overhead, and then uh, let me let me see if I can do. A little bit more detail here. So for a lot of the tablets, they um, will actually take standard USB equipment, which is kind of cool. You just have to use what's called an on-the-go dongle. I normally have it in here, but I don't know where it is right now, so I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to demonstrate that. But with an on-the-go dongle, I can connect uh, one of my RTL SDR dongles or mm -hmm. my software defined radio dongles using the on the go little connector, which makes it really, really cool. Uh, if you're on travel or whatever, now you just need a little antenna, wire antenna, your tablet and the little dongle to make it connect. And that's all there is to it, which is pretty cool. Um, while I'm doing this, I found the uh, charging cable for the, uh, for the Kenwood here. Josh. But yeah, you're mm -hmm. calling it a dongle. What? What is that? I, I'm not really familiar. Oh. I know I've heard the term a couple times, and I'm not really so, sure what that means. So it's it's basically a USB stick. It's oh, a okay. it's like a USB okay. stick. We call it a we call it a dongle, uh, just because it's it's just got the USB end on it that goes into your laptop. But in this case, I just connect it to my little tablet, and now I have a little easy SDR device that I can I can use to connect to local radio stations if I'm on travel. Um, it, it makes things pretty easy if, if I want to go that that route, that route. You know what? I just got my radio connected. So I'll show you real quick, guys, to wrap up here. So here's my radios on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect the 
antenna. Oh, it looks like it's already kind of loud out there. And if I do this right, let me see if we got set up. Josh, did you connect your radio with uh, with the power on to the antenna? Uh, it's connected to the battery bank. Oh. Nothing. Uh, nothing serious. So I'm going to run that Woad application really quick, and I'll I'll do a quick wow. little demonstration. So, so now I've got I've got my radio on, and my Mobi Link is it on? Okay, the Mobi Link's on, and I'll go to sessions here. We've got a packet session that I believe you guys can all hit. It's uh, KN6RTE. Let me zoom in on that a bit for you. KN6RTE-10, the one on top here. And he, or this station there, if I... Let me get my radio in view. Do the packet? Yeah, so if I hit start, and let's see if this light goes on. There, light goes on. And there we go. So I think it's working. Yeah. So we're sending messages right now. I'm sending my uh, Winlink messages. So that fast, I'm up on the air. Wow. I literally just turned the radio on, turned the back of the, the little MobiLink uh, device, started the uh, tablet. I had the session already set up, and I just started going on the session. The only thing you might want to do is add uh, the memory channels appropriately for the radio, but I just write the notes on what frequency that uh that node is on and then i just jump over to those frequencies when i need to yeah so that's a uh the tablet's an m8 tab yeah the lenovo m8 tab Lenovo. okay great thanks better than hauling around a laptop isn't that amazing that is yeah. really slick yeah so if you want you know if you want easy not nothing nothing too serious if you don't need a laptop for something special then yeah you can just do that with um just bring a tablet and your little keyboard and that's your whole that's your whole kit yeah. so then if i go back to messages i've got two messages um somebody says hey josh can you see that you cannot hold on uh, i may not get there that's about it that i can get but it says hello josh just got Winlink Vara HF, your tutorial, your tutorial, <laughs> tutorial, sorry, was able to help me set it up. Just wanted to give you credit for this, and it was from Ruben KD6CWI. So I did a video on setting up a Vara for HF, which is a fantastic application if you want to do Winlink uh, with a Windows computer. So yeah, there you go. So just like that, that's kind of how I check my messages sometimes. So if I wanted to. Um, let's say, here you go. If I go to reply and I turn on my little keyboard here, may not have batteries, it does, so we're good. So we'll go reply, and I think I can just go, hello, yep, thank you for the message. And there you go. Then the advantage of this is it's got an actual mouse cursor, too. So <laughs> you actually have a little mouse flying around the screen with this uh, touchpad. So, yeah. That's that's probably my cheapest radio outfit, believe it or not. I'm using a, I'm using an old Kenwood radio and a, a Bluetooth $20 keyboard and a cheap Android tablet. That's probably the cheapest. I, and actually, the MobiLink is probably the most expensive part of the kit. Uh, believe it or not but yeah we thought you can do winlink aprs um you can do the dongles and i have my little um antenna analyzer that i can connect to it and i can visualize the antenna analyzer on the screen so yeah right on well thank you for letting me show you my stuff oh thank you, <laughs> oh, yeah, thank I, you. i'm sure everybody enjoyed um, all your ideas and your different equipment yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, always feel free. You know, let me know. Ask any questions. I, I'm here I for a little bit. I want to tell them yeah. all to join your um, your YouTube series, and they can sign up and subscribe and get all your latest stuff. Josh uh, 
does all types of equipment, antennas, everything, and he's really enjoyable. Sometimes he's he takes um, uh, balloons out in his backyard and he puts up an antenna and does all kind of fun things. So um, really s- subscribe to his YouTube. You'll really enjoy it. Well, thank and, you, Mitch. And Josh, thank you again so much. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. I, it's, last call for questions. Did I miss? There we go. I thought yeah, so. There, Don, there. Let's, go ahead, Don. Um, hey, Josh, in your opening scenes, uh, just when you came online here, I thought I spotted a Kenwood vi- a slow scan video communicator. You did. You, you yeah. got a slick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually looking for the cable for that thing. Yes, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I need to find I, I, the I've cable. Got a, I've got a pair of them. Plus, I've got the D7 Kenwood uh, oh. uh, handy talkie that goes with it. <laughs> that's that's the radio that was made for that that uh, that you communicator. You bet you. You bet you. <laughs> well, I'm I'm good on QRZ if you ever want to sell that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you no, just I, I wanna, send me a message. I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to put it on the air uh, in the near future. Like I said, I've got a pair of them. Uh, plus, I just got the D7. And oh. Blowing, yeah, I should mention just so I don't forget, um, you can do SSTV with all these radios too um, that I just showed. Yeah. With there's yeah. there's Android apps for doing SSTV as well, so that's a thing. Of course, you can do Good. too. Now, but the Ken was just used, designed. Have you used that video communicator? I've only taken pictures with it. I I need that cable to to get it out yeah. and into the into the radio. Yeah, that's, it's a very unique cable. Yeah. Well, they make two. They make the uh, the flat pin connector that goes to the D7, like the one you have, I'm assuming. Right. And then they have another cable that is the two-prong cable that is the uh, the side of most Kenwoods, which actually is this guy. I'll show you. Um, so the side of most Kenwoods is this two-pin connector. This one. Yeah, that, yeah it's the uh, microphone speaker. Yeah. Connector. Is that what you have on yours? Um, yeah, I've got, actually, do I have one or two cables? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's in a box not too far from where I'm sitting. Josh, uh, yeah. Don and is a got... collector. Yeah. Don is a collector. He awesome. has everything. Well, Don, if you don't want one of those cables, you send me a message and I'll hop right over and, and pay you pay you for it. I'm just down the street from you, Josh. Yeah, I know. We're, we're uh, you're down. The, all of you are down the street from me. It sounds like so. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, any other questions before I head out? Yeah, I got one question, Josh. Uh, thanks for showing a ferrite at the end. Appreciate that, Palomar Engineers. Thanks you for that. <laughs> oh, do you know I Palomar Engineers and I have a. a I, I don't know how much money I spent on all the electronics in my house that my <laughs> wife brings home. Just gets a Palomar uh, toroid. <laughs> Well, thank you. We'll, we send them out as fast as we can. But I had one question on the Icon 705. Yeah. How's the how's the battery life on that? I've been thinking about getting one, and they just uh, not quite sure about it yet. It, it it really depends. I mean, are you primarily what what it, what kind of operation do you run when you? I'd when run you FT8 it? on it probably. Oh, okay. Good, good. I'm glad I asked that then because that's the most taxing thing, right? Whenever you're running like a yep. full full duty cycle mode like that, you're gonna pull the battery down quicker. Um, you can always run a 12 volt external battery, right? Uh, like the BioEnos or whatever; those are easy to do. If if you want, you'll probably get three hours out of the stock battery. I'm guessing if you were just not going too hard with the FT8. If you're really pushing it, like every you're filling up every every time you got an opening. Yeah, um, I Oh, well, then you're you're probably going to get less. You'll probably get two hours or less out of it. It's just my guess if you're running the full the full five watts. Yeah, I run a Bioino a big battery that Kevin gave me, and I also got one of his big solar panels, the huge ones. The oh, well, four then, foot wide. So I think I should be okay. I run the Icom seven hundred six on it uh, all the time, mm-hmm. and we ran we ran the whole thing for field day and never had to recharge anything. So. I, I, but I love the 705. It's just like the seven, you know, the 7300. So it, it, it's like the marriage between the 9700 and the 7300. It's like their little. It's their child. That's what they the Icom made, uh, because it does two meters seventy centimeters. It has the. It actually has a remote server capability built into it. So if you have it at home, you can tunnel in from, you know, 
somewhere else using the the icom software but uh to to your point on that i i ran the 705 exclusively with a buy with a a bio no panel their charge controller and their battery um all day for winter field day and i just went up and down 40 meters i think i only really ran 40 meters and i had a great time up and down the coast of california got as far east as like ohio i think and that was pretty good i was happy with that josh i i have to tell you this i think this has been the most informative the best and we've had a lot of um speakers but you are by far the best we've had so thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you that's very sweet of you thank you mitch for inviting me catching up with me at uh, hro thank you for doing that yeah (laughs) (laughs) okay well everybody i'll hop off then and uh, again thank you so much ham nation in two days so i'm going to go set up through the episode on wednesday (laughs) that's his program (laughs) all right thank you everybody see you bye-bye okay bye all right all right well that was sweet that was the um that's a club down here in Seal Beach, California that I was able to talk to. Well, what do you think of my kits? And uh, I'd also like to know what's in your Ham Radio Go kits. Feel free to comment below and let me know your thoughts. Hey, if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And if you're this is your first time, click subscribe. I do live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every other Wednesday for Ham Nation at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. Thanks so much for doing so, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.